Alright. Oh, got the lighting on you. We're all good to go. Looking good. Ready to do some uh, podcasting. Make sure that they can't see my balls out. Yep. That's not good. We need to make sure <laughs> that we can see Curtis's thighs, which is should... all good. Yep. And we are live for episode 22. The big 2-2. Two, two. 22. Um, how has your day been today, Nathan? My day has been quite... Sunday? Was it a lazy Sunday? Was it a productive Sunday? Was it a procrastination Sunday? It was, what sort of Sunday did you have? It was a lost some solo queue game Sunday. Right. Not Those dodging happen. when I'm field, when I should just dodge. Yeah. Play Jana. What am I doing, man? Information in one ear, information out the other ear. I had a really good Nunu game though, but yeah. I'm testing Hecarim stuff at the moment. So I, you know, my patch notes rundown, yeah. there was a section on Hecarim. Yeah. In my experience, Yeah, he got a bit butchered a little bit. Well, in my experiences, I didn't think Hecarim was overly strong. Yeah, I was confused. I was a bit strong. Yes, it's about strong. That. But the way I view Hecarim is that he has such a, such a linear one-dimensional identity that it feels like... What do you think that is? Well, when I think of Hecarim... Yes, you, he can do effective ganks if... Because this is the way I view Hecarim. Yeah. His ganks don't seem one-dimensional to lower ELO players. I view a champion like Elise and Rek'Sai and even like Evelyn, Lilia. These are all champions that can do many forms of engages and ganks. And there's different ways that they can kill you. Hecarim is like, he's going to E, yeah, you and he's going to R. E, and then you're, like, trying, it's like, you're trying to work there's out There's no, flash. it's just, and, and he can only, he can't like dive over walls, very rarely yeah. dive, dive over walls. Like, it's very difficult in my opinion to like, in high real games for me anyway, I can play. deal with Hecarim easier. Yeah. I mean, the only games for me that I feel like Hecarim's out of control is when he has a, a Yumi. Other than that, um, yeah. Well, I'm just testing builds. I agree with you. Sometimes Hecarim can feel really bad. But um, I I. But apparently, nerf didn't affect the clear at all. It's just purely. Yeah, it's just like your fight and stuff like that. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, it, it it again. I don't think he deserved the nerfs. But yeah. anyway, I've been testing builds. He's, he's, is there any champions right now in the preseason? By the way, that you just there's no one set. Everyone's confused about the build. Silas, no one knows. Every pl player who's playing. It's actually just two. There's Yone and Silas. Yeah. Pretty much every pro player who's playing Silas and the one tricks are all doing something different. Yeah. The one tricks are doing like electrocute with like Proto Belt or some of the one tricks, anyone looks at all of them. I saw Perks do Night Harvester. I've seen uh, Niski always do Leandri's. And then you see Nemesis doing Everfrost. <laughs> Nearly every player is playing something different or a different setup. Yeah, and, same with and, and these are not, not even, these are game changing items. Mm. Like literally change the identity of a champion. If mm. you have Everfrost mm. into like a second item demonic embrace with Conqueror, you are literally a different champion. If you were to go, it's even Ludens or Pro, and then you're completely different to the Proto Belt with Electric Hit. So this is like what's blowing my mind. It's like how can a champion feel so like? It, usually there is just one clear way of playing a champion in my mind. Like mm. there is one that is just mm. optimal. Mm. Like everyone can see it's optimal. Mm. It's like no one. No one plays, you know, Syndra in this other way. So it's like, at the end of the day, this one setup feels the most optimal for, for the high ELO players anyway. It might be scattered across ELOs where you see it played differently in gold and then in platinum. But it's like everyone Even in the same rank ELO. is playing yeah. something differently, which is just weird to me. Yeah, yeah same with Hecarim. Just Hecarim, think about Hecarim like... in the past, like everyone built that Trifles build. Yeah. That's, that was just the stock standard the best. Now there's like Divine Sunderer, uh, people going like Ravenous Hydra first item. They're not even building Met Mythic first. Um, Strybreaker. I've even seen Gore Drinker. I'm pretty sure on Hecarim. Gore Drinker. It's yeah, crazy. I mean, maybe, 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 maybe Riot have cracked the code to make it really unique. Maybe. You I mean, can I do said this. Well, okay, what I said in my video was that what Riot's intention was, the way I interpreted the patch was, you need to understand the items and and because every stat is so hard to get you got to really be clear about the identity of your champion mm. to know what stat is important to you. Mm. Like if I really want, if I really want ability haste, I can find a way to get it, but it's coming to, going to come at a cost of probably my mana um, and maybe some durability or maybe some damage. So usually I think the way it works is it's easy to get 
HP and ability haste. Everything has HP. HP and ability haste you can yeah. get together. Yeah. And then AP and mana yeah. come together. Yeah. And then like, and then there's magic penetration as a single thing. So like, and then things like attack speed are very hard to get. So it's like, they're kind of groups and then there's single stats. That's the way I view it right now. But um, yeah, I feel you. I think there's a lot of, but I like this build diversity. For me, anyway, I, the, it's going to be so interesting to see if it if we and it always comes back to the cookie cutter way that this is the best way to play these mm. champions again, or if it actually is going to be set in stone. There's a big debate like Eve: do you go Night Harvester or do you go uh, Rocket Belt? Like it's just, it's crazy, and both of them, everything's working. Like it looks like it's like you know. Well, I think uh, this is the way I get this asked this question actually a thousand times with Annie specifically. Mm. So Annie is this really debate, highly debated champion yeah. because. You have people like LS and the Church of Annie and yeah. all this shit where like there's a, there's just a way that people interpret it purely because uh, what's, of What's LS. the Church of Annie? What's that? Well, like LS is like, he's been a big advocate of a, a certain build. And this build back in the day used to be Rylai's into Leandri's. Yeah. And I was a critic of it from the beginning. I like the combo, I understand, but it, in theory to me, it didn't, it was, too, it was too theoretical. Like it didn't translate to practice when played at a high level. Or even like a moderate level, I think it was actually making the game harder for some lower elo players. So I I was a big fan of the rock the proto belt. But then there's a lot of Annie players that don't like proto belt. And then there's some high and then every high a lot of the high elo Annie's like there was Annie bot who used to like rush Archangels. And then there was a cute male guy in Korea who was going like Ludens every game. So mo- a lot of the Annie's were doing different builds. And what I said is that all of them are good. You just gotta understand how that build facilitates a certain type of trade or a certain type of any mm. where yes if you're going to go proto belt or even now rocket belt on the new patch you're going to have a lot more level six setup burst with ignite okay if you go ludens you're probably going to have better a better overall laning phase and more sustained damage with threat lane like you don't have that burst you, you lack that gap closer and you don't have that um yeah that burst damage on the item so it feels like it the every build is good as long as you're playing to what that build does does that make sense yeah yeah so you, and, and people overcomplicate it. Yeah. Because in lower elo, it means less and less and less. Of course. You can just pick any of them. Any yeah. of them will work. Yeah. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Well, I mean, I mean, I think the understanding how the items, you know, it's like you can give someone a set, but it's like, because I mean, there's a lot of actives now, right? You're going to yeah. actually use these actives. Well, that's why my item videos are so um, important for people to watch now. Like when I initially made the video, I'm like, how important is this? But what I realized towards the end of last season was, Holy shit, players actually really need to understand how items work eventually. Yeah. Like, yes, you can get away with it kind of lower elo, but eventually you're going to have to understand because adapting is more and more important. And it's the small details that actually are significant, more than more significant than ever they have ever been. There's so many games, like I can't remember the last game I've gone where I've literally followed a specific build path exactly. Even like the components you build first and the items and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's incredibly difficult to explain, I think. I'm, building? Yeah. Well, a lot of it's a feel thing. That's hard to explain. It's, it is hard to explain. It's a feel thing. It's what feels best for the way it's you It's like play. intuition. It's like, I can't, like, yeah, yeah. there yeah. might be an item here. It's like, or even That's how I felt with Rylai's and Leandra. It's like, just a feel thing. It's just, I, I, I can kind of articulate why. It's because the components for, yes, the item is good, mm. but the components to get that item suck ass. Like, you want Bla- there used to be Blasting Wand, with a amplifying tomb and ruby crystal like sitting on any of those items only give you one stat like th- that's why triforce now is so good by the way because all of the components just feel good to build you have the you have the sheen which is a great gold. item 700 gold you have the hearthbound axe mm. which is it just feels like a really solid item and then you have kindle gem yeah so all three of the components when you go back you spike off like Sheen plus a ruby crystal or a hearthbound axe plus a ruby crystal or whatever it, that combination is, it feels good. Compare that with Rylai's back in the day. Or like that's just a direct comparison. You get like a giant you get a, amp you, No, you get like a, you get literally a blasting wand and like an amp tomb or yeah. a blasting wand yeah. and a ruby crystal. Yeah. There's no extra stat. stat. It's like Kindle Gems, like the CDR yeah. and stuff like, like that. Like you get, you need something. So that's why I, I, I never liked that build path. That was one of the reasons. Yeah, it, got it. That's, that's wasn't a good a point. But, um, out of interest, so I've had quite a few people on my channel ask me, um, has the jungle side, so you know how I've done that jungle pathing video? Yeah. Talking about timings for Last gangs and, and stuff. you know, there was talisman, yeah. there's machete. How, how with the jungle changes and, you know, obviously the item, there's no machete and talisman anymore. How has this affected gang timings? If, if at all, or the jungle paths, like what are we seeing more or less of? How does this, and scuttle changes and everything. 
Um, what does this mean? I would say... I mean, Ooh. Scuttles don't give any resources anymore, which has to mean something. Yeah. Gromp now gives the resources, which surely means something. Well, well. The, the only difference is now for five camps, you're skipping wolves. So you're just doing Gromp instead of wolves. So, the, so let's say if you're doing a, a, an efficient five camp, you do red. Talk to talk, Give me a specific champion and a specific path. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Hecarim, because that's yep. what I'm playing a lot of. Okay. Um, do you so start you, Raptors? You can, but... It's always better to get the... You know, get red, because then you have a nice little... Because Krugs, I just love Krugs. I'm, I'm a Krugs fanboy, right? I love getting them off the map. Lots of experience in gold. If you want the max, like, five camp efficiency experience, mm. you go Krugs. So red, Krugs, Raptors, Gromp, blue, crabs. So you do Gromp first. First. Before. Yeah. Can, why, why that way and why not the other way? I don't know. Do you want to maximize the amount of time you have blue? It feels... Like, that's just the way it go. I don't know. Why is that? <laughs> well, I mean, you could, like, blast going over the wall to do blue buff. But wouldn't it make more sense to get Grump last, given that that would probably leave you with the most well, amount no, of resources? Or no, not? no, because well, it's you like... you need the resources to get blue. Okay, so you got to think about this way. For Hecarim, you've got your E. So you... If you go and hit the blast cone, you lose your E, right? Okay. Because you got the E's, like, the extra damage. You want to do red, Krugs, Raptors, and then run and hit E, and then hit the Grump. Can't it's, you do the exact same thing with the blue? blue? I don't know. I actually can't explain that. Anyway, that's what... Maybe it's... Maybe it doesn't matter. It doesn't it's matter. just negligible. Anyway, it's, it, it, it's around the same time. So, you're, you're, so l l before you tell me at what time roughly you would get to river, I would assume if you were to do that path, you would probably get to river around three oh, minutes. Oh, and it's like... Okay, actually, no. This is the three thing because it's hugely efficient because when you... When you... Instead, like, let's say if you go from blue to gromp, right? You're auto attacking the Gromp, and you're not. Ah, you, you can if you're doing the you're blue, you can the kite entrance. it down. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Got that makes it? a lot of sense. So it's like you're not backtracking yeah. and stuff. So, um, let me guess. So by the say you were to do that that path, yeah, you would roughly be in the bot. Say you did top to bot on red side, yeah, you'd be on bot river or entering that bot river by around three six seventeen or something like that. Or three. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say around between three and three ten, but so it's even later than that. Three, yeah. three yeah. fifteen. Plus. Yeah, it takes some time to do the grump. It's a bit of a so the scuttle's camp. usually already spawned by then. That's by the right. time you get into river. Yeah, right. Yeah, so nothing much. So has nothing. Changed, yeah. Though. Still. But still what still champions good. really struggle to do? Well, this actually has meant Kazix is a little stronger though, right? Because Kazix gets grump very easily. Yeah, that's a pretty good path on Kha'Zix, yeah. Because Kha'Zix right now feels strong in my games. That's like, Out of all the junglers in the game right now, for me, anyway, Kha'Zix just feels interesting. quite strong. Yeah, I need to play it, yeah. Um, I would say also Graves can feel quite strong mm. with that Eclipse mm. setup. Mm. Eclipse just feels like a bit of a bullshit item right now, even on like Jin, like Jin with Eclipse. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Jin in my games recently. Yeah, Jin is popping at the moment. Dude, have you seen that thing as well, Yi? Full clear by 3 minutes 15 or something. No leash. No. What's that? And I've seen sitting at every normal game I played, mm. everyone's playing Yi. Is it really? Because Cowsep, I think, I don't know if he copied it or he created it. Yeah. Apparently Yi can like full clear in like th about 3 minutes 15 or something. Ridiculous. <sighs> That's interesting. So. And he probably has like some OP build or something like that. And Ye I, Ye in my probably... games, Yi was one tap. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Please remove that, <laughs> that like, champion game. Um... Anyway, that's pretty funny. I don't want to be playing against my C's, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'll move on to something I wanted to bring up here. Yeah. So someone someone complained, or not complained, he gave feedback actually about a podcast. Yeah. And he was saying how sometimes I can talk too much and then it feels like the Curtis show. It is the so Curtis you, show. So you've got to make sure sometimes I don't go overboard. Because I can just keep talking sometimes. You can keep talking a lot. <laughs> it's all right. We can make... It's going to be the Curtis show with again, guest Nathan. That's it, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know... Um, you know... Um, you know how Conan... Yeah. Conan show. You know how he has... This, what's the uh, the guy's name? who pops in randomly. Is it Andy? Andy. Yeah, yeah. Andy. Yeah. What? Like, I'm the Andy, you nah, know? Nah, I don't know? think it's like that. Yeah, it can it should, be. No, I'm but it can be, but I don't want it to be. And it's up to you, Curdy. I mean, you can just sit here and talk for the next hour. Or like, you know, I'll just sit here patiently and there you go. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for listening. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. Anyways, here's a topic and I might talk on this one for okay. a little bit more. Okay. And I'll chime in. I'll ask you questions. All right. Gotcha. All right. So there's this Reddit post that, that absolutely popped off. It literally got something like, it got 27,000 upvotes. What did the double live retirement post get? I don't know. Just to compare. You don't know? No. Okay. Um, a 53-year-old mum giving thanks to League of Legends for helping her to reconnect with her son. It's titled. 
And it goes, five years ago, I felt disconnected from my 17-year-old son. All he talked about was League, and I had never played a computer game in my life. I did not understand why he couldn't just stop mid-game when I needed him to. I did not understand his love of esports. We were drifting apart. So one day I asked him to teach me how to play. To say that it was a steep learning curve is an understatement, but I kept at it because I loved him. The more I understood about the game, the closer we got. After some disastrous games on Summoner Rift, where I was rightly flamed for not knowing how to ping, I switched to just playing ARAM because it forced me to learn all what all champions do. It was also more chill. How funny is this terminology that, you know... This, the mom. This 53-year-old <laughs> mom's chain. I mean, flamed, you know, like... <laughs> Well, I was never very good and never tried playing ranked. I understood enough to enjoy watching the L- LCK, MSI, and Worlds. In 2019, my son and I traveled to Taiwan together to watch both of the semifinals of MSI. It is a memory that I will always cherish. Um, and now he's grown up and left home, doesn't play with him anymore, but grateful that I made the effort to understand the game he loved. Definitely worth. That's how she ends it. That's awesome. How cool is that story? What a beautiful story. League of Legends connecting mother and son it was beautiful man and i was thinking it got me thinking this one there's two components of this so, i mean you're you're lucky i mean you're such a unique exper- person i mean childhood because your dad was a gamer you know my dad was a hardcore gamer and you were like you know the story of like you sitting on his lap you know playing well that's the only reason stuff. i was became good at games yeah many people don't know that i actually haven't spoken about this on the podcast yeah i was playing games from a very young age um as, as young as I can remember, my dad had a PC, even though we couldn't afford it. Like, it was just his thing. He's like, he just made an effort and spent the money on the PC. And yeah, from, from when I was sitting on my dad's lap, I was playing the original. I remember one of the first games, there was a game called Nerf Blast Arena. Hmm. Nerf Arena Blast. Hmm. And it was kind of like an Unreal tournament, mm. like Unreal tournament, or like with a, Nerf guns, with Nerf guns. But it was like pretty competitive. It was like online and shit like that. Mm. Like it was actually an awesome game. Mm. It was a really good game. Mm. But that was when I started just playing FPSs. So that was really young. And then there was some like other, you know, game. There was like there was a old school Path of Exile type of game called Nox. This, if there's some OG gamers here, they may know these games. There was also, you know, the classic Age of Empires, Age of Mythology. There was Lego Races. And then I got into Counter-Strike 1.5. So when Counter-Strike first came out as a beta, of one, the beta of 1.6, my dad got it. But in the, and it was funny because it was like cheaters everywhere and stuff like that because yeah. that didn't have the VAC system. Yeah. And yeah, I played games from very, very young. And my I was so good at Counter-Strike when I was a kid was that my dad used to bring home his work friends to mm. show me off. Mm. Like he's like, hey, look at this. It's look like at you're this a zoo animal. And I just like go on like a public server with 40 people and I'm just at the top instantly. So just dominating he, everyone. Here's my kid here, man. Look at him. Just look at him. He's like dominating like all these and guys. That, it was crowding around. Yeah, room. so what happened? Like, so I was... I could have potentially been like a pro. I believe I could have been the prodigy of Counter Strike in Australia. Yeah, I was already playing at like a very high level from an incredibly young age, but I was so young that they thought I was cheating and hacking. Mm. Mm. So I couldn't actually play anymore. So because when you had to do competitive games, scrims and stuff, so I was doing scrims when I was like fourteen, fifteen, or pugs and stuff like that, right? And then that you have to calm. Like if you're playing at that level, you have to calm. And then I tried to like I remember I tried to get a voice changer and stuff so they i could mask it but i couldn't get it to work and or i sound like an alien <laughs> those voice changes in 2000 yeah, that was shocking. shocking that was shocking i sound like they an suck alien. now even though yeah they're... and i couldn't yeah. do it so i just they all thought i was a hacker because yeah. like, there's, there's no way in their mind that yeah. someone could be that good at that age and so that's what got me into games so my dad always still now plays games yeah so to this day. it's such a different experience because i mean my game parents, is so normal in my family oh, i mean my dad played a little bit of games but like not like no way like like yeah. like you were fine to play a game like your family would understand if you were playing yeah, my games. mom understood from a young age yeah. if i'm playing counter-strike she's, she's not calling, calling for dinner. dinner that's yeah, see how cool and you know, like she's like she'll saying, come in and say you don't you all good you finish, <laughs> you finish the rounds <laughs> All my through my high school as well. My mom would say like, oh. Oh, "Curtis, when you finish your game, you can come out for dinner." Like it was just accepted. And everyone in my house, if there was lag, like my mom would disconnect all the Wi-Fi, turn off the Wi-Fi, off yeah. the phones, the iPad, the TV. Like everyone in my family was a co-op. It was like cooperative to get make sure me and my brother did not lag. Jesus. Yeah, that's awesome. It was a mission. That's awesome. So you, would you say you connected through your dad like a lot because of the games? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean it was huge. I mean. It could have been better because I remember the, we used to kind of like Guild Wars, but we only had the one account. So yeah. we would like all play yeah. one by one. Oh, okay. 
So me and my brother and my dad, like, all we used to fight over the computer. Yeah. Because <laughs> there was only one Guild Wars account. Yeah. And, like, we used to, like, kind of take turns. It was fun. So that's why on weekends I would wake up at, like, 4.30 a.m. Yeah. Oh, so because you would have the account no so one if I could, on. I could then play for, like, four hours before anyone even woke up. Jesus Christ. Just before school. Oh, no, this, no, this is on weekends. weekends. Yeah. On, on, no, before school I also woke up, but I yeah. didn't wake up that early. I used to wake up, like, You wake up at 4.30. People want to sleep on the weekend. You are you get up at yeah. 4.30 to play. When I was, before school, I'd wake up at about yeah. 5.30, and yeah. I could usually get, like, I could get, like, an hour and a half of grinding on Guild Wars in. Yeah. Um, and then on and then on the weekends, i will do that. Same thing, but earlier. So I get a whole day in. <laughs> That's just some crazy shit, honestly. <laughs> the amount of hours I've played. It's just computer. Sitting on the computer, grinding. <laughs> anyway, sorry for rudely interrupting your story again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I asked you your quick question there. That was, okay. a good, that was a good little story, Curtis. Yeah. You know, educate the viewers about yeah. you know why Curtis is a, is a gaming but you always But you didn't even come from PC. You came from PlayStation. Yeah, you? I was a PlayStation You're a console guy. gamer. Yeah. And then I then I went I, I converted. I realized you know? <laughs> shit console. No, games. what got me onto PC was like these shitty little flash games, like Adventure Quest. You loved them. You were obsessed with. I Adventure love Adventure Quest. I grinded that game, dude. <laughs> I was gonna go for 130. I couldn't believe like, level 130 on that game. Yeah. If you got that, dude, you. Yeah. I don't want to say no life, but you're literally playing 18 hours a day <laughs> Is that for hard? years. Yeah, it was so difficult to. <laughs> what the did you get? I I peaked at like I was almost got 100. It was like 97. Oh wow! But it'll take me days it take it took you weeks to get a level i remember how cool the weapons and the armor was in adventure yeah Quest. and i like bought like the egg guardian and x guardian and stuff <laughs> like subscription i was like dad can i please have that <laughs> anyway so my family never really understood me game like i, I struggled Didn't league. Your dad abuse you for playing games oh yeah i got it shit all the time no no but i was a combination because i was doing bad at school and playing a lot of games so then what do you blame right yeah just playing the games yeah <laughs> but playing the games I had I was I was not a trouble kid at all so it's like they like let me play the games because they're like wow. he wasn't caused trouble anyway at school he's just yeah. like the quiet guy all I did was just want to go play video games yeah so they sort of let me off the hook there but, yeah but yeah I thought that was awesome man and and okay so now think think about this Curtis so you know how it's like this 53 year old mom or she, she was probably 48 yeah. this time yeah felt disconnected with a 17 year old kid right yeah and I'm trying to think right now when we're like 40 and stuff let's say we have kids yeah What's our version of being disconnected? Mm. What would that look like? Because we're so technologically like it's part of our life. Yeah, but maybe it's something that like we some technology thing we refuse to adapt like to some VR thing. Yeah, like couldn't be. TikTok. We're sort of seeing it now. Like kind of. we don't care about TikTok, and it's something you definitely don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Like It'd we're boomers, you know. Like, what would that be for us? Yeah, because like, we're, 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 we're like I'm old competing, school. dude. I'm gonna compete. I'm gonna beat my son or daughter, you know. No, I think we're just gonna be old school. We're gonna be like purists. Like we're gonna like remember. Back Maybe in the League day. of Legends is like the old school. Yeah, games, exactly. Like it's the old games. school game, right? And yeah. like we're, we're like, you remember when League of Legends took skill and you had to use your your, your, <laughs> yeah. your fingers, your actual hands. It's like some VR. But now it's like all in your brain. Yeah, use your mind and stuff. Yeah, and like. And then you remember back in the old day, we had a keyboard and a mouse. And we, no, we we still do that. <laughs> yeah, that's what it will be. It I won't think. even be a keyboard and mouse. No, but, no, but there will still be like a niche bound of people that play with keyboard and mouse, yeah. and all these and the kids and stuff will do that. Yeah. Would you adapt though? What do you reckon? I think that we might get stuck in that mindset. I could, I, I could see. Man, I could see it already with me and my music taste. Yeah. Because you, what you grow up with and what you, you become like a, a snob in a way. Yeah. Like a, a music snob or yeah. a movie snob or it, you, for us, will probably be a gaming snob. I mean, you kind of felt like that with even moving from WoW to Guild Wars. You were an elitist. Like, the way you viewed the WoW gamers comparatively to all the other gamers. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah like you FPS were like, and stuff, oh, yeah. yuck, that guy's an FPS gamer. Yeah. He's nowhere even near what a WoW game is like. It's like a different sort of skill set, yeah. That's what we're going to be. That's what you're probably going to be like when you're older. God, man, I'm going to be so, so old school. I feel like I want to adapt to these new games, you know? I think we won't be as bad as our our fathers because yeah. like things change so much because it's like tech but we're like sort of learned to I think we'll always adapt. play more games with our sons um, or our daughters and yeah but I don't think we're going to be at we're not, obviously not going to be in line with them you know we're not going to understand the memes what I'm this is what I'm actually yeah, the most terrified of yeah. is the meme culture yeah. and the, how the way that's they gonna, communicate yeah influence communication I'm, I'm disconnected these days I think so yeah you, if you go into like a random like discord of 12 year olds yeah. you can't even understand what they're saying no dude. They, 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 they say, like, they communicate in words like cringe, XD, Pog Champ, not like, <laughs> what's the other one? It's one of those three all things of, all of in the every memes. sentence. Yeah. <laughs> all of the Twitch memes. Yeah. That's all they communicate in. <clears throat> so I'm like, if you don't know what the Twitch meme is, yeah. it just flies over the head. Oh, it's going to be so difficult to, to keep up with all this stuff. Pog Champ, Ellie Giggle. 
like they just say that they just say it they so you, say it so yeah. you know what their experience so so but you need to like know what that what that looks like in the yeah. twitch chat you know this is my pog champ it's pretty bad kid i'll be honest <laughs> um yeah so i thought that was a little cool story yeah Again, man that's awesome about, I, I definitely about. um props to her man i mean i respect that big time it's gonna be a lot more of those stories i think yeah it's kind of, i mean the only other one is kind of like faker and a grandma right his it's grandma cool. yeah grandma followed all of his games oh really and watched every That's single awesome. one of his games i didn't know that yeah. actually oh wow yeah if you look at any of the faker documentaries mm. it's like his grandma's so proud of him yeah and like she watched every game yeah and she came to worlds and That's stuff she comes awesome. to worlds. awesome That's actually she awesome. understands all the players and all the champions yeah like Ka- it's like the cap's dad's famous dude yeah it's like yeah. that that's yeah. so cool eh? really um, cool so um yeah i mean again this is this is just, again this is sort of looking at more the positive side like this is something that wouldn't be touched on in the media you know no it's, it's a feel-good story, yeah. but we don't. No one wants to view esports or gaming in that light. Like this is not just gaming; it's esports. It's literally they're going to events. They went That's to Taiwan, so cool. dude. That's awesome. That's such an amazing experience. You know? Yeah, man. I feel right. you. So that's that one. I wanted to actually touch on something, Nathan. Yeah. Um, and get your thoughts on this. So sure. The other day, I got a message from a NA coach. Yeah. And he introduced himself, and he co- he said he coaches. Um, NA Challenger players. Mm. Like, cool. Mm. And he asked me a few questions. And one of the questions was, you know, how do I, how do I, how does like an NA, because cha- this NA Challenger obviously is feeling maybe motivation issues or like ego problems or whatever saying, you know, things like, how can I improve when everyone in my region is trash? Like, how am I going to be as good? Well, literally the quote, how is he going to be as good as someone like Chovy or Dopa or Faker? And like the way I responded was, it's not about, this kid being as good as Chovy or being as good as any of these players. It's about expressing his best, being as good as he possibly can, whether he is or isn't. That's not, that's, that's just, it is what it is. Like you can, you can always find ways or your goal should be to cap out essentially within your region. And there is so much to learn and you just got to adapt to your environment. That's the way I view it as well. Is like, you're not going to improve the same way as Chovy improved in Korea. There's different conditions. Yeah. Don't be Chovy. Yeah, don't be trophy, be you. This is like um, a lot of people, like like interviews, like I saw stuff like, you know, Mike Tyson's obviously fighting and that yeah. sort of stuff. Um, and all like, you know, people were like, you know, when they were interviewing Kobe Bryant, it's like, you know, how are you going to be? You're going to be the next, everyone's like the next Michael Jordan. The next Jordan. Michael Jordan. Like, no, I'm just being Kobe. Yeah, just be Kobe, yeah. And it's... Like like that statement, it's, there's... Like I can understand it, but there's so much wrong. There's so many different angles. Why? It's, that yeah, exactly. It's, it's like it's, it's kind of like it's this actually statement. overwhelming for me to answer. Well, it's kind of like this, Nathan. The reason I don't like that question is because it's kind of like the tier list within league. Yeah. So it's like if you can, if you, it's fine to like compare yourself in a healthy way, but we know, like comparing or putting yourself up against one of these players mentally can be so damaging. If but if done properly, it can be very motivating, right? Mm. So think about Kobe. Mm. It's not that he never thought about being as great as, you know, was it Charles Bar- Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan. He wanted to win more trophies than Shaq and things like that. Like he did actively, I wouldn't say compare, but he, you know, he pitted himself against these pit players. Well, I mean, he soaked the knowledge from. But it was less. Well. I want to be them. I want to be Kobe and be better than them. Yeah. And and but what I'm getting at here is that you can have a healthy ad- addiction to a competition in a way. Or you can view these situations in a healthy way, but it's very easy to go over the other side where I'm just never going to be as good as Trovi. Trovi, Trovi has so what's a the way point? better no, server. Yeah. He has all these better quality yeah. opponents and he gets to play in the LCK and then look at me here in mm. NA with these trash players. It's like, okay, if you are rank one and dominating every single opponent, then okay, then you might have something to say there. When has that ever happened? When has one player been so dominant that they can't improve? You can only ever, like, in order to stop improving or learn nothing from someone, you would have to be so far ahead. It's like, this is not realistic. Mm. Find ways to evolve. Develop new coaching methods. To the coach as well. Develop new coaching methods. Be well, creative. Be innovative. Find it, what it means to be an NA coach. It's also, like, like that statement also, part of me thinks it's like, well, we're forgetting the journey of Chovy. Chovy now is not going to be Chovy five years from now. Right. So why it's like it's like sort of a short term versus long term thing as well. It's like because if you just chase Chovy, you're never going to be better than him. Like because right he's always now, evolving. yeah, especially and right now as well. It's yeah. like there's no expectation. Like Chovy's, no one talked about Chovy four or five years ago. Okay, 
popped up out of nowhere. Be- Trophy could easily have said in, in Korean Zoloky or something like that. Well, I mean, like fakers. I mean, I mean, you could say at that time as well. It's like, what's the point of trying fakers so far ahead of us yeah. or, or something yeah. like that? I mean, I guess it, I mean, I guess you can't no, but really that's a say different, that's a different, different one because it's sort of the same server. server. Yeah. yeah, it's more. It's like okay. It, it, let's just let's actually let's use a more personal example, right? Let's compare. If I were to compare, say, my YouTube channels to someone else's, right? And let's use an example. Let's say if you were to compare me versus Peckmorph or me versus mm. Midbeast, mm. right? I'm not doing YouTube to be Midbeast. I'm not doing YouTube to be Peckmorph. I'm doing YouTube to be Coach Curtis. And your own style of content. I'm doing my own style of content. Yeah. I'm doing things my way. I have obviously oceanic disadvantages. Peckmorph obviously has the advantage of being in an A. It's fine. There's other ways to adapt. Find a way. Like I could easily be like, what's the point of trying as an OS content creator? Mm. What's the point? I can't help people as good as he is in NA. Okay, find a way. I maybe have to study more VODs. Maybe I have to have a higher amount of discipline. It's maybe, the mindset. That's the, that's the yeah, mindset it's the, there. It's, it's what you're trying to find, create a way for it to work rather than find reason for it not to work. And and it might not work. And it might, yeah, exactly. It might not work. You might never, I may, or okay, my example doesn't really make sense, but that guy, that NA challenger, he may never be as better as Toby. Yeah. Maybe that's just what happened. I mean, that's actually pretty likely, to be honest. It's likely. But he's definitely not going to get there With by thinking that mentality saying, yeah. all my opponents are shit, so I can't improve. Like, I'm in NA, so like, you know, how can I actually improve? And and, and the, the crazy thing is, it's like, you know, the other thing as well, Nathan, is what people don't understand is that the game, you know, when people say like the game is solved, like they think it's largely solved. I just don't even think that's the case. Like, I feel like we are finding so many concepts every single year that like, if the game was like a game that has been around for, you know, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of years, it's it's much harder for, say, someone in in this specific situation, say League of Legends had been around out for 200 years and it is largely solved and maybe the patches kind of tape it off and it's very, a similar game, then maybe it would be actually quite hard to, to match I up. I don't know. I laugh. I literally laugh at that statement because, like, I, I think back to... Um, you know, examples, it's like what, like Bill Walsh and stuff, like the, the offense. Uh, the 49ers. Yeah, and like the... That's West Coast style, offense. Yeah, the West Coast offense and stuff like that. With a game that was ran for age, ages that revolutionized. He's, de- he's just revolutionary. Or, that's or, what I'm getting at, is or, that you can find a new concept to be better than someone else. You just else. can't think of it right now because it's not there, you know? It's mm. like, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly, you don't know what you don't know. Surely, there's, like maybe there's another creative way to play out that matchup that you've been playing. Like, you think about it more or you think about it, you're forced to think about the matchup maybe in another way. Because you have to, you have to like adapt to your opponents. I, I don't know. There's just other ways you can get shit done and push your limits. Yeah, the game's not solved. I, I, it's not even in the realm of being solved. Not even close. I, I wouldn't can't even. I don't think you can use that terminology. Not for a game that's always changing. Yeah, as well, that's my point. Is that impossible. the game is always changing? Yeah. So just, just there has to be a better way or different. Like think about that AD Twist of Fate build that Jebsu just developed. He plays Twist of Fate in a way that has never been played before. Yeah. Yes, you can say similar, but it's quite different. Or Dopa, the way he innovated TF techniques that only came about in the recent year. You could have easily made the same statement at the end of Season 9 mm-hmm. and be like, you know, the game's largely solved. Mm-hmm. And No, but Dopa literally revolutionized the way to play lane even in Season 10, you know? I just find that very... And, that, and that's my... This is my, my... One of the main messages I always say. It's like... People were over-exaggerating the Yone nerfs. So Yone got these crit nerfs, right? And... What the point that I tried to get across in my video that not many people, I don't think they, maybe I didn't articulate it correctly, was that when, when something changes, you, you got to, okay, let's be more specific. Let's use a league, the league example. Okay. <clears throat> because the bill path is objectively weaker, you have to find way, or you can find ways to alter your runes, the way you play trades, the way you use your abilities in a creative way to get a similar result. You're not going to get the same result by doing the same thing now that these changes happen. So the mentality that you should have is, okay, given that this, these are the, these are the uh, issues now with Yone, given this is what I struggle with, given that I have a weaker early laning phase and I need X amount of farm and I need to stay relatively healthy... How can I do? How can I find a creative way to do this? Do I need to pull the wave level one? 
do I need to start E? Mm. Can I actually just max E in this mm. instead of Q? Maybe can put a three points W to get extra shield. Whatever it is, can I build this extra, this weird item in the early game? Like there's, there's a way you can navigate. And because Yone is such an in-depth champion with so many ways to play it out that it has such a high skill cap, you can get it, you can make it work. Like you can find a way to make it work. I would say that this is much harder with a champion like Rise, mm. although it's probably possible. Mm. It's much harder. But because Yasuo, these champions like Yasuo and Yone have such high skill caps, you figure out a way. And the way Yasuo was played, right, when Yasuo first came out, is completely different to the way Yasuo is played now. Mm. You, people now who play Yasuo would run circles around the way uh, Yasuo was played back in the day because it's just been innovated. People figured out ways to get shit done. So people are just giving up on you. It's like, oh, he's been nerfed and he's yeah, just Yeah, I'm just removing now. him from my pool. It's too hard. I can't figure oh, it out. Oh, That's how people feel. And it's like, dude, Yone is an objectively strong champion no matter what we're going to be of saying. Of course. Same as Akali. Yeah. No matter what happens to Akali. Yeah. The champion has such a high skill cap, you can find ways to make it work. Oh, courtesy, this is why I don't do patch rundowns and yeah. and tier lists. Like, oh, like, like there's, there's certain things, because, I mean, we're getting really involved with, um, with um, I mean, just the nature of our work. Like, we hear a lot of, the, we're really involved in the league community and, like, people ask for questions about improvement and champion pool, that sort of stuff, Right. There's certain stuff that I'm starting to become very like just immune and numb to. One big one, it's like, oh Nathan, what do you think of this? This is broken. This yeah, is bro the broken thing. Oh, broken has lost its meaning completely, apparently. Same as OP. Broken yeah, yeah, and they're OP. Say the same thing, right? It's like it's like people are saying, like I saw some like Reddit posts on like that, like, because I'm I'm doing content on Nunu right now. It's like AP Nunu is broken. It may look broken in a certain game, in a certain thing. Certain situation with a certain like, champion. Like, and yeah, it might be good, sure. But like, it's like everyone... It's an excuse. It, That's what it is. It's an excuse. But like, if people like are pushing their agenda as well. It's like, I do this, so you should do this. And it works like this. Right. So I don't even care. I, don't, I actually don't even care about a certain style of build. It's like... It's like, why, what are the fundamentals at play here that yeah, make it strong as well? well? I don't even want to get into that either as right. well. I mean, that's a great question to ask as well. But it's like... I mean, I guess as I guess as it comes down to, it's like I, I'm always focused on helping people improve and climb, right? Right. If you want to just like have you know chill out with some fun builds and stuff like that, you know, you can say, but I don't want you to go around saying this is broken. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the mentality behind saying broken. Yeah. As well. I feel like we're doing this a lot on this podcast, but and you guys may think, eh, what you know, you guys are talking about the mentality behind shit all the time. <laughs> it really is big, though. It is like it because what you don't understand is that your mindset dictates the okay. The, I can't remember what, it was like a pyramid. The way it works is like, it was like a circle. Like your mentality influences the way you're thinking, which influences the type of questions you ask, which influence like the, the way you view something in a way. So if you can, if you look at an object, it's like the uh, cup half full, cup half empty. Yep. That can lead you to a whole host mm. of differing mm. questions, mm. which lead to a different way of viewing something. Right. And mm. that's why mentality is so important. Mm. Because you don't know what you don't know, and you, you don't know what you're going to find out in the future. Given That's right. This exactly right. Over the long period of time. Exactly right. It's exactly what it is. Yeah, I definitely feel you, dude. I think that this broken has definitely lost its meaning. Um, and again, this is this the reason this is the case, Nathan, is because of how powerful a single win or loss of League of Legends is. Yeah. Emotions, what a testosterone, yeah. the adrenaline. Like pumping. I've worked it out. Like this is I, I, Do dopamine's like pump it, pumping like you. you you got so many kills. You're up here. You're you're going through the roof. But you know the funniest thing, Curtis, is that person. If if I was to, if that person was to continue doing that specific thing for twenty games, they would probably give up on the champion, or then say, "Oh, this is not that strong anymore." Because then what happens is that then they'll go into a game, and then but that build doesn't, doesn't work at all because it's like just. I mean, just the champion nature of the champion. Some champions just do better against you, right? It's just an impossible game, and then suddenly, like, ah, oh, like you know, it's whatever. Yeah. But you know, it's like again. But then we need to come back to certain things that. A good in certain like the way broken is used it's like this is good every situation no matter what yeah. when was the last because yeah I'm that, that's broken this. that's that's what broken means when was the last Let's time define broken yeah when was the last broken is essentially when this is unbeatable or like this is too it's it's like over, completely overtuned comparatively to what else is in the game what what do you can you have any specific examples that something that was like truly broken i think when some of the items initially came out 
Yes. I mean, I don't, I don't want to talk about the season and pre-season okay. 11 items. Just like in the history of like season Cassidy. 10, 9, 8. When seven. Aurelia first came out, I was when it got buffed. You remember Aurelia? It was like that meme, nerf, better nerf Aurelia. Yeah. I'd say Aure- either Aurelia upon release or when she was starting to get those buffs. Because okay. I think she came out and she was weak and she got buffed. I yeah. think. I might be wrong with that one. I think Vlad was genuinely broken back in the day. There's three champs that I think. Aurelia, Vlad, and Cassidy. What about Yumi? I'm unsure about Yumi when it first came out. But I do think that um, those three are 100%. We're broken. Just the kids. Like, that's literally broken by concept. Cassidy and having like this dash and a, si- a huge silence. Literally for a second, I literally just forgot our, our podcast is called Broken by Concept. Yeah, literally broken by concept. <laughs> because we're just using the word broken. Yeah. It's lost its meaning. This is actually a, a big... Well, you know... Yeah, so broken is genuinely not fair, yeah. essentially, comparatively yeah. to what else is in the game. Yeah. In the past, there have been some broken things that have gotten hot fixed, but they're the main ones that come to mind, man. Those ones, those three specifically. Like Vlad, if you think about like the concept of it, it's bullshit. <laughs> you heal for using abilities. Yeah, you just, that, so no, you don't have resources. But then it's offset because it's like, well, your lane phase sort of sucks and you... you um, don't have any CC. But no, but back then it was OP or yeah. genuinely OP because not only was the kit strong and the, the numbers were much higher, but think about the, the game back then. People didn't know how to control waves. And the only reason, the only way you can punish Vlad reliably is through wave manipulation okay. to create a certain situation. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't know how to manipulate waves with a Vlad, even now, it's really hard. Yeah, okay. You have to build waves or bounce waves to create, get either poking on the tower situations or gang set up but if you don't know how to do that Vlad is actually broken because he just sustains forever you can't actually poke him out of lane any scales you know okay but um one thing i actually was so funny because it touches exactly the same topic is i had a guy in my discord say his theory to climbing is you just alter your champion pool every patch to pick the most op get a oh, bit of Jesus. illo that's that's, okay. that's what he said yeah, no, no. and i said uh, and i then i said i chimed in i said yeah. i don't think that's the way to go because then you don't have any champion mastery Okay, so if, if but then he's like, not everyone wants to only play two, or three champions because then they don't have fun. But then I'm like, okay, mate, you might get better short short term results from doing that, but in the long run, you're not actually going to be a good mid laner. Yeah, so that's that's the whole point of champion mastery. Is like you get to a point where you don't need to think about clicking buttons anymore, so then you learn the game properly. Yeah, that guy may get to diamond four doing that. It's possible, even though I think it's unlikely. It's possible. Mm. Like you just play the ridiculously OP things every patch. Yeah, but what, what are they? Does it Samira. really change that much? Samira, man. Okay, okay. Samira, Samira when upon release broken, yeah. was come on, man. Yeah, okay, all right. That's even Aphelios upon release. Yeah. Senna upon yeah. release. A lot of these champions when they come out are overtuned. You know how many times Aphelios has been nerfed? He got nerfed like eight times in Did a row. Really? Okay. Senna was very strong when it first came out, but although people didn't realize how strong it was because they didn't know the build. Once the build got found out, it had to get nerfed. Tom Kent, when it came out, was very, very, very strong. Dude, <laughs> there's a lot of champions upon release that are strong for a short period of time, then they get hot fixed. Yeah, Even Victor. Yeah. Victor got a massive nerf as soon as it that hot fix came. It was a huge hot fix for Victor. Okay, is, is this is this That's possible. You can abuse these things. You can abuse these things. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. maybe maybe people people are justified saying it's broken. Again, like it's the same thing. I don't like no, the but, mindset behind it. But it's not then they're not like those situations are, but like there's very few of them. And for a very brief amount of time. But then everyone just goes around using the word all the time for everything. Yeah, because like, it starts at like that point. One thing works well, so yeah. this is broken. Yeah. They have one good game, two good games. It's not a good yeah, it's not it's not a good look. It's not a good um, mentality to have. I actually find myself using it quite often as well. Do you really? You got to catch yourself. I got to catch myself. I, I think a few words I got to catch myself on is inting. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, OP and I, would say, I don't really use broken as much. I would say OP. But when I say OP, it doesn't actually mean overpowered. And this is where the thing gets... This is, again, it ties back to one of my favorite... Remember the Indiables? You assume commu- assumes communication in a way. It's like... Or if you don't clarify what you mean by that word specifically, because in league terminology, it can mean th- different things to people. Yeah. Inting yeah. can be used multiple ways. Yeah. Inting can be used as the guy is genuinely running it down 
like and doesn't want to win the game. He's intentionally feeding. You can also do it that that guy's just like dying like to ganks. Like he's not like genuinely trying to die, but he keeps dying to ganks. My bot lane just keeps dying to ganks. You just just say they're inting. Um, and then you can even say like, oh yeah, my bot, my my jungle is an inter or whatever, just because he died twice. <laughs> and it's just like a off the cuff remark, but that's that's quite toxic. <clears throat> it is. It's very toxic. And especially when you're in a team environment. Yeah. And this is we we found this out the hard way. Yeah. Where one person would say something about a champion. Yeah. And it's just such a lazy way of lazy way. Of it's lazy communication. It is lazy communication. Do you think me and you do that in real life, Nathan? Where we say something How's about that something? communication in real life. Well, it depends what mood we're in. When we're in a proper discussion, we never really say that stuff. I feel we like we use a statement for something. I feel like we don't define enough our words. Like we've had to get the community defined. Like, what do you mean by um, SKT beating C9 Academy? Like, let's get more specific. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, that's what. I, that's what, a very good point. When 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 we do this podcast, I mean, for those of you watching this, like, we're red noobs. We're podcast noobs. <laughs> we're communication noobs. We're, we're trying to get better. Yeah. And I think me and Nathan have spoken about this a few times where we want to go deeper. Yeah. And we got to go. We got to ask better quality questions, questions yeah. and we got to go deeper. We got yeah. to define things rather than just assuming that everyone knows what we're talking about or even assuming what we're both saying. And it's actually, this podcast has made me realize how poor communication, our communication can be at times. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think, you're, I think you're spot on. I think it's definitely something I need it's to keep thinking about. It's laziness, man. Lazy. It's just laziness. Well, it's like, is it la- it's, it's laziness, but it's also... Complacency. Complacency is probably a better word. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, I guess it's just, it's just lazy, complacent. Yeah, because, I mean, you're not putting the effort to actually describe. It's just like a... A quick way to say something to like push an agenda in a way mm. like again that's what that's the way i keep thinking broken it's like i do this so you should do this type thing so i don't know if i've said this on the podcast but i've changed my coaching style a little bit yeah have i spoken about this on the, i think on the podcast? you might have told you i kind of I, some of it because i can't even tell the difference between our podcast of conversations we're just talking. <laughs> our real life our real life conversations because this is not real life this is this is we're a, a simulation we're in a simulation of a YouTube <laughs> we're literally just in the YouTube video right now or like the, the Spotify thing and yeah. we just pop out of it you right know? <laughs> um, yeah so I've, I've altered the way I do coaching when I first started coaching amateur I would say too much I would say things that didn't mean that much mm. and now my goal is to coach with the least amount of talking. Yeah, I love that little as little words as possible. I want to make things as simple as possible. And ask and questions. Le- and ask questions, but let them come let the client come to their own conclusions. Yeah, I think that's the best way to coach. And, and I need to do that more. You got to be comfortable in silence. Yeah. When I now what I've I've trained myself I'm in the process of training is mm. I want to be okay with I'm just watching this. Let the information soak into my brain before vomiting out whatever the first thing is. Because what happens is I catch myself this time. I've seen this situation so many times. Like, all right, here we go. Now we say this because this is what this is the, what you always say when this happens because yeah. I've seen this a thousand times. Yeah. Like, like this person could be thinking about this differently to that other person that I was, you know. You will see trends, but in order to see trends accurately, you have to let your mind catch up and see the game. And one of my recent clients... Um, he got immediate results after our coaching session. Awesome. He got he won eight games in a row straight oh after God. our session. Yeah, like he took a he did block three two blocks, mm. and he said, "I can't believe you were able to pinpoint what was this what was going to give me this many like he was already struggling mm. and then he just had eight wins in a row. Mm. Boom, amazing KDAs. Mm. And 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 the way I view coaching, this is why coaching is hard to teach, and it's something I want to figure out. Is like there are many things to work on at league. I I can sit there and I could probably coach the same VOD in a hundred different ways, catering for that person, <clears throat> for their rank, their champion, the way they view the game. <clears throat> With this guy, it was quite, I wouldn't say it's lucky, but I would say that um, I really hit the nail on the head. Some play, some cl- coaching clients, it's much harder. It takes me a while to filter through mm, the, the things that really, I think that that's the thing that that person needs to know. With this guy, I just hit the nail on the head. And for this guy, it was literally, some people, it's like the, the, the base level like things that I would view as simple. Like things that I would view as just like, how can you not do that? But what I've learned is that all of those things that me or you may find or someone else may find simple, for someone else, they may not even be thinking about that even at the most simple level. And this one was, he got ahead 
he wasn't using lol states. Wasn't actually thinking about the win condition. Mm. As simple as it was, mm. I'm like, well, your micro is pretty bloody good. Mm. Why are you losing? Why, 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 there has to be a real yeah. a core reason here. Yeah. And I, and I yeah, finding that core reason, that's what it is. That's what coaching is, that's the what core coaching, reason. Yeah. Cause, cause I, I, so whenever what is I point influencing out, those decisions? Whenever I point out specific little things, it's like, I, I, there's a part of me that knows like this doesn't really matter. Like I need, I'm, I'm trying to find, I'm always trying to find the core thing. And, and like, there's one common thing I always see for jungling. The core thing, this core concept that when people understand this, that just revolutionizes their, their game is just because you're on one side of the map doesn't mean you can't literally just walk to the other side of the map. Right. And, and, and it, it's, it's because everyone has such rigid path and it's like, I start here, I'm here. You have to, so gank I top. have to gang top and have to do that crab. But once that, that it's like an extra neural pathway. It's like, I can actually just go there. I can just leave it and go bot. And it's, usually sometimes it works really well because they don't expect you to be there and it even works even better or better, you know? So it's like stuff like that. Like you tell them someone like, it's, it's not about, it's not about that specific situation. Or that what gank. That it's gank. like why that, why you should have been bot. What what we what led you to make that that decision to gang top there? You that, know? Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, well, it's like also, but I could have easily said in the same situations. No, you should be ganking bot because it's your win condition. It's like, it's like no, whether that's true or false, it's about understanding just whether you can do it or not. That there's the option to go to the other side of the map. It just like creates this whole neural pathway. I've seen huge results in lower elo players around that. And that's what a real. That's where I think. I mean, I found myself improving. Obviously, you've improved a lot as a, as a coach over this year. And this is something that just comes with the coaching experience. Mm. I mean, I, I wasn't going to be able to get to this level doing, you know, only 10 coaching sessions. Of course. We had to do a lot impossible. of coaching sessions to improve our, refine our craft. Yeah. You know, and, um, and this is why I'm so passionate about being a positional coach as well. Because there's just so many things I can't figure out. If I'm going to go from top to mid. Oh, absolutely. It's just yeah, I mean, really I'm even so finding hard. stuff out about champions. I need to study these champions and I coach only these champions. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm, what would you say for you? And actually, I'll, I'll share mine and then you do yours. But, okay. Um, I'll, what I'm sharing now is what I believe, yeah, the, I would say the biggest learning coaching wise recently in the last two months, what's been the biggest breakthrough coaching tip and for me, like I said before, it was basically the same thing is don't feel the need to spurt out stuff. Just yeah. be quiet, relax, focus. I have to focus very hard to find what is going on in here and what is at play here. Before, I was distracting my mind by talking too much, talking about every little detail. No, let's play this out and we'll rewind it and come back. What's the trend here? What's missing here? Why are these decisions being made? And that's really allowed my to have clarity, a lot more clarity. How about for you, man? I mean, I would say that's something that I've, I know that, I mean, what you just said there, Curtis, that's really important. Like that's something I'm still working on. Cause I always sometimes go off track on tangents. I'm like, I want to spurt out my knowledge. You want It's like an ego thing sometimes. Yeah, it's like an ego thing. I want to spurt out my knowledge, but it's like, well, again, that's not helpful for this person, this specific moment, right? It's not about what you know. It's about how you can help them. It's not about how cool you sound doing it. Like I might sound like an idiot doing this coaching session, but it's going to get you results. I'm not going to talk about wave on wave two, three, you bounce this one and then you, you position to the bottom hand side here and then you, then you hard chop and then go for a reset. Well, like I can, I can like talk about like concepts. I can make it sound cool. I can sound like LS if I want to sound like LS. Yeah. <laughs> Do I want to sound like LS? Do I think that's necessary? Probably not. I think you're spot on. I think, I mean, yeah, it's, it's something that takes time to develop though. And for me, it's, it's, I mean, I've shifted my whole thing to champion master. I only coach three champs at the moment, Eve, Hecarim and Nunu, just because it's like those champions are played so differently. I want to, I want to share another example of this. So on my discord, someone asked a question and the question was, Curtis, what do you think of Silas's strength now, given that how easy it is to build a uh, healing cut healing yeah. reduction yeah. with orb that's eight, that it's 800, right? So if you think about the average default response, like, oh yeah, I'd say Silas is, my, is weaker, okay? But then the way I deconstructed, I said, all right, let's break, let's get a little bit more specific here. Let's think of the matchups where Silas will be going W max in which the healing reduction matters, which so likely you'd be going W max with Conqueror. Let's think about these matchups because if you were to go Q max and with Fleet, the healing reduction doesn't really mean that much because you're not going in using W that often. Mm. So I said, okay, Let's talk about the matchup specifically where I'm going to be taking W Max with Conqueror. Okay, maybe it's like a Fizz, maybe a Yone, 
maybe an Echo. Okay, now, can these champions build Orb? How can they incorporate Orb into their build? Where well, Fizz is rushing an Orb, or Echo is rushing an Orb, or Yone is rushing an, uh, what do they call it? Executioner's yep. thing. Yep. Isn't that going to massively delay their spike? Delay their spike? Yep. And it doesn't even matter if they're reducing my heal because I'm just going to be stronger yeah, than that, that. Yeah, that's, that's a huge thing. And, and it's yeah. like, the way I broke that, and then the guy commented after, Zanir, he was like, Curtis, I really like the way you deconstructed that. You didn't just talk about it at the high level. Love you it. went into the details yeah. and you broke it down why it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. And, it, and I said, the devil's in the details. League of Legends is a details-oriented game. And that's, I, thought, I just found that to be a very clean example where at face value... I like that. Yes. It's well well explained. Versus getting into the... Yeah, in how theory. That in theory. Yeah, you need healing direction because against... A, a perfect example. I literally, actually, I got the exact same question asked about do you build Bramble Vest on Nunu if you're against healing champs? And then I was like, okay, well, if you're really far ahead... Um, the way you're playing fights, you're catching someone out and killing them instantly. Healing is actually... I mean, healing is really only good in extended situations, extended fights, but that's not how you play Nunu. You're going there to get the quick snowball, the catch, done, bam, get the objective. Doesn't matter. Doesn't actually really matter. In the grand scheme of things, it actually doesn't really matter. Sometimes I actually don't even build it at all. And, and, and this flows on to the way you review your own VODs as well, you know. If you don't look at anything in detail, it doesn't really matter. Like, you're not going to get... You're not going to get actionable learning objectives off of it because there are so many things you can focus on you got to get very specific absolutely you know devil's in the details Gertie. devil is in the details man oh so we, we good for that topic Curtis yeah man so so this sort of flows onto this Curtis yeah. but I found high elo players I feel like that um and I I I I feel like I'm slowly starting to really understand lower elo players. Okay? okay. Like I'm trying to always like trying to think of it from their perspective. Cause what I, I, I was looking at this discord, this conversation, I had some higher elo players yep. talking to some lower elo players right. and people asking, you know, what's dumb questions, what's good questions, that sort of stuff. And, um, there's, there's terminology thrown out like by the higher elo players. It's like, I oh, just play Zin Zhao or something like that. And you can just get to D4, like just jungle. Just do this. Like, Oh, it's just easy. It's just easy. And there's such a disconnect between, mm higher elo players higher elo players and lower elo players we're like their advice is actually so bad it hurts it actually hurts it makes them worse makes them worse and what high elo players don't realize uh, okay try and think this from like i was trying to think i was thinking of this like being really good at traditional sports compared to a game league of legends for some reason everyone does this even ourselves we think that it's less to be really good at League of Legends than it is saying it like bowling or golf. I don't know. We do. Uh, for some reason, we think like that. It's like that same statement of yeah. like, just plays in Zhao to get Diamond 4, like as a jungler, yeah. is the same as saying like, as like let's say I'm bowling, let's just throw strike. it in the middle and you get a strike. Yeah. It's about, it's the same. But there's so much that goes into that. There's so many, like the footwork and the way you put your energy. And That's everything. right. And like, you need to practice Where a lot. You're looking, yeah. And there's consistency over a whole game of like hitting the yeah. strikes. Yeah. And then it's like golf. Just hit it into the hole. I think why this is the case, Nathan, I mean, my theory, I think you're spot on though, is that you have to play a lot of games of League of Legends. Again, we goes back to, you've gone, you're playing thousands of games. These people who are high elo have played thousands of games. So they've, it's been so long. I mean, it's been so many games since they've like been a beginner that yeah. they've literally forgotten well, what they like. they never played with the intention to to practice to be good. They just happened to just be good. happened to get there. So it makes which would be the exact same if I was doing golf or bowling. But league and gaming so accessible. It's I think what it's done is it actually has made it because it's accept more accessible. It's easier to do because you don't have to put on the bowling shoes and stuff like that. Right. It's lost. People have lost the value in being good at it. People don't understand why it's actually still the exact same well, as that. Yeah, that's what that guy actually said to me, um, Falella. He messaged me and he was saying how people don't respect how hard it is to be a pro player. Yeah. Like we take it for granted that that, that is that, that standard of well, play. Because that is just so it already playing at such a high level. Because you keep hearing from high level players, this guy's challenge is trash. He's he trash. trash. But he's actually still really Think about good. a professional golf player or something like that. They would almost never say that no. about an amateur player or no. something like that. Or even a tennis player. Because they respect they should res they respect, respect what goes in yeah. into that state to get to that point. But for some reason there's no respect being anything higher than dark. Interesting. I mean, okay. Let's let's riff off this. Mm. I mean, a, a potential reason of this for this to be the case would be 
in league, you can't break down skills. You just like improve at everything, like in the past, in it, with the way it's currently been, you kind of slowly improve at everything. Well, it's like a huge knowledge <laughs> thing as well. You need to know what all champs do, right? Well, okay, yeah, the knowledge aspect. But let's even get more, let's get more like into the details here. A lot for, okay, for some of the old school players that have been playing like us, for like, say you've been playing for between six to 10 years. Back then, like, you kind of learnt CSing, trading, warding, how to control your character, all like at the same time, just by playing bulk amount of games. Now that wasn't probably the most efficient way to learn, but that was, this is what we did, mm. right? We just played a bulk amount of games, which is just, that's not the way- But remember, we weren't, we weren't even playing to learn. We were playing to have fun. We just wanted to win. Yeah, but, which falls into my point in which we're not breaking down skills and be like, today we're working on our backswing. Today we're working on our drive. Yeah. Today we're working on our putting. Yeah. Well, that's what like a coach or something like that does, in, right? In golf, right? You can yeah. break, what I'm saying is that you break down the skill. So when you learn a skill, you respect what it was like to be at that level because there's an obvious, there's an obvious starting point. Yeah, got it. And there's an obvious end point. Yeah. But in league, the yeah. starting point and the end point, you don't know how much better you're getting after every single... It's a really good point. Because, okay, think about in, in if you were to improve specifically putting in golf, right? Mm -hmm. You could only do putting... You can isolate that skill on the same hole, do the same hole every every day, and you could see you could track your improvement and see how good you are getting putting. Think about league. You don't know if it's your CSing that's contributing to your wins, your trading, your champ mastery, your map awareness, your like what exactly is contributing to your win. You could be improving at multiple things at the same time, that, so you don't get that point. satisfaction yeah, of knowing, holy shit, difference. great, I improved my CSing. Now I'm great CS, and now that's actually got me to goal five. Got for not goal four five. <laughs> <laughs> goal five. You're so, you've never been in that before. You're like such an old school because you, cause you've never been in like a, a dumb and four or something like that. So you, 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 got, you just skip divisions. You don't even know it's still No, because it was gold five before, remember? Yeah, yeah. Like went four. five to one, and then they changed it to four for some reason. I know that, but I'm just saying, yeah, just yeah. How, that's just how disconnected you are from the lower like, community as well. It's just, in my mind, it's just master, grandmaster, and challenger. Um, yeah. So I, I would say that's a contributing factor. There is no, it's very blurry. And that's what I'm trying to get better at now is like figure out how we can really hone in. But even then, we don't have those KPIs. You can't actively track, a, it's, it's difficult to track a specific skill. Mm. And how do you know you're, you're not improving on many other things at the same time, mm. which you probably are improving at many things at the same time. So I would say that's a contributing factor as to like how people forget. I think it's a good point. That's a really good point. So yeah, I just I just feel like there's such a big disconnect between high elo players and lower elo players, and 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 high elo players just like this. Yeah, yeah, again, we always talk about the ego, the toxicity. Oh, just, the diamond just four ego it down people's throats. Like the diamond four ego is fascinating to me. Everyone's at a different stage of their journey. Okay, some people have just started the game. How many people write into us saying they started the game like two years ago or something like that? Dude, I'm actually surprised at how many new people are playing league. Okay, Curtis, that's actually brings me to random. I was actually not even going to talk about this in the yeah, podcast. Yeah. All right. The is the game growing? Okay, let's hear this, Curtis. All right, this is a Reddit post right. uh, a couple of days ago. Okay. At the end of season ten, the EUS server has just surpassed four million ranked players, which is more than a million than last year when it was three million at the end of the season. This is the first time EUS has reached four million ranked players milestone. Here's the other server comparison for just players. This is just an extra little yep. statistic. Korea has four points, four point eight million. Wait, is that, so how many does? you have four million so korea has more yeah korea has that many yeah whoa whoa that's a big part of their population i thought korea didn't have many but they do yeah holy shit ranked players that's insane na is 2.2 million half yeah get this eu na eu nordic east 2 million so it's similar to na yeah and that's the eu nordic east wow. server. that's huge that's huge that's a huge server but you could bulk those both in EU. They use technically 6 million players, really. But a lot of them have two accounts. Bjergsen came remember. from like EU and E and stuff like that. No, but a lot of those players, that's are, true. they have two that's accounts. That's true. That's actually a good point. Brazil, 1.7 million. Turkey, 1 million. Land, 922,000. Latin America South, 910,000. Russia, 280,000. Ose, 270,000. Wait, we're the same as Russia. Yeah. But they have access to EU challenge. EU solid, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And Japan's 140,000. They're the lowest. So out of the 200, how many are now? So over 200. 
270,000. Uh, sorry, I was ranked 11 out of 270,000. Congratulations, Curtis. That's a pretty good achievement. It's pretty cool. I mean, imagine how cool it would sound to be top 10 at EU. Yeah. Out of 4 million. Four million. Yeah. In Korea. Wow. That's why Korea is really competitive. It's crazy. So, yeah, dude, it's growing, It's man. growing, right? I mean, a portion of them are obviously going to be people making second accounts. Yeah. And there's a lot of Smurf accounts. Yeah. But surely it's growing still. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, again, how many people come in that are new? And again, for some reason, there's no respect someone coming in new because people just assume you've been playing the same amount of time as us. As right. me. That, I've never seen that as a conversation. Oh, when did you start playing? Mm. Never said. I still think the players that are starting now are going to... They're going to improve much faster and be much better than the players that have been... Like, just because the way they practice is going to be much more efficient. Yeah, like, I'm even so. look, looking at 6'10", right? So, mm. 6'10", mm. He's, dropped, he's dropping out of school to pursue being a pro player. Oh, wow. Right? That's serious. And his family's, right? like, fully supportive. Yeah, that's awesome. And he has, like, training blocks. Yeah. Taking, getting my coaching. Whoa. He's, like, he's really going above yeah. and beyond to yeah. become a pro player. Yeah. And he's, like, thinking about his champ all the time. He doesn't give a... F- shit about wins and losses he's just trying to play to improve like he's happy to go from 800 lp down to 200 just mm. to learn a new champion a high yellow love it doesn't care that's awesome you know and he, he he's such a he's so passionate to like improve to be a pro player when did the, when have you seen that yeah like that dedication yeah going out going out to any extent possible to well f- that just did never exist when we were pro players like think never. about how good that guy can that, get that guy would be 10 times better than we and he's were. already you know already he's Super high yellow and EU challenger mm. and a young kid mm. dropping out of school, giving that much up. And his parents being supportive of it. Like, come on, it's man. It's a perfect mix, dude. Literally ticks every box. Always well, going to put in the work and, and achieve that. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, super interesting, man. So yeah, I mean... The, and other it, games are just dying, hey. Curtis, again... That's, I swear to God. Curtis, the gaming industry is very big, okay? I, I've read something in the paper. Well, Hots is like dead. Hots is dead, right? Okay, but I read something in the paper, Curtis. Yeah. Because um, I, I went to my family's place ye- yesterday and my dad always likes reading the paper and he showed me this little article, right? right. It was about something about um, telco companies are doing this. <coughs> they During COVID, there's lots of gaming traffic and they've like got this new package where it's like reduces your lag or something like that. Could be I think Optus was thing. doing something like that. Yeah, something was Optus or something like yeah. that, right? And there's like a stat or something like that. They're like 90% of households have consoles or something like that, you know? Right. We don't have a console. We're, we're just we like this niche. Now. What? I got one. Did you get one? Yeah. Oh my God. Xbox, that's news. The, oh, my Xbox from home. Oh, you bought it? It's it's coming on Monday. Oh, it's mine. All right. That's pretty exciting. And guys. all my games. All right. Well, we're, we're part of that stat now, but we weren't part <laughs> of that stat for a long time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, because there's a lot of games that not playing. I mean, oh, I, Curtis, just please don't make that same again. Okay. Every other game's dying. Okay, I, no, I'm not talking about gaming. I'm just talking about like esports. You're talking about esports. You're talking like, about the highest level I'm talking about like PUBG, Valorant. Yeah. Maybe not Counter Strike. No, but, but Curtis, where are they Overwatch going? Where, where are they going? I they swear, going somewhere. I swear, all the FPS players like go back to Counter Strike or yeah. this Europe and stuff, and then all of the the so many Dota people come to League, Hots people come into League. That's true. Like, these people like just come back. They come crawling back through the people who quit as well. They just come back. Curtis, this is the most unstatistical driven conversation I've ever. Okay, you know, okay. The reason I come up with this, yeah. is I had a Hots guy yeah. DM me two days ago, one person, and say he was on the face of the client. He was like one of the top coaches in oh, wow. Hots. Yeah, he'd been in the community for a long time, yeah. coach pro players and stuff like that. Mm. Like a regular face on the face in the, in the front page, and he's made recently made the move to League. And it's like, well, if these sorts of people are making the move, you know, and they haven't even been played. That's the, true. You know, that's meant something to me. Yeah. Like, if those sorts of people that are like figures of the community are leaving, then shit's hit the fan. That's right. Okay. Look at Gams. Was it Gamsu from Overwatch? That's true. He came back. Pro plays yeah. Monte Cristo. They all failed over at Overwatch. They're coming back. Like, yeah. people come crawling back, dude. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah. Maybe League is just. I mean, it is a quite a closed minded statement, but I still <laughs> truly believe that, like, I mean, Okay, remember that? Not even that long ago, brought up that stat: the PC bangs in Korea. That's true. League just would, was dropped. That's Everyone's incorrect. in Valorant, the League yeah. Killer, and mm. all these other games. League is the one that's coming crawling back every by single time. Now, by far, yeah. again, they they rise up, and then League's just still there at the top. How is League gonna die, man? Fascinating. All right, should we move into some questions, Let's Curtis? Do it, man. All right, so I'll do the good old battery change arena, and yep. then we'll um, we'll get into some questions. Yep. We'll be two seconds. Yep. So we're back in business. No, it's Nathan's mailbag. That's what I was trying Nathan's to get Nathan's mailbag. This is what the new segment's called, Nathan's mailbag. All right, Nathan's mailbag. Here we go. Welcome question to one. BBC question. Oh, yeah, by the way, if you want to submit one of these, 
We sometimes we forget to say this. Wait, how many how many um, responses did we get on the community post for Jono's? Oh, for our yeah. the next podcast? Yeah. Uh, we got a decent amount. Well, I'd like to see more. So if anyone has any psychology yeah. questions. So he's, he's an, he, Jono's really an expert in managing stress. If you find yourself stressed, it, can't, it doesn't even have to be league related. Yeah, honestly. league related. That's right. So it can be anything. Go to our YouTube community cab. We're yeah. doing that. That's our next op- episode. Yeah. Ask a question there. And then we'll, we'll ask Jono that and we'll talk about it in the podcast yeah. if we are... Uh, if we think it's going to be good. Yep. All right. So this is from <clears throat> someone by the name of Jonathan. Jono. Another Jono. Um, hello, Nathan Curtis. I introduce myself. My name is Jonathan and I'm a 29 year old from California. I have been playing league intermittently. I can't really pronounce that word apparently, but uh, meaning he's been playing on and off yep. since season three and have main support ever since. When I play solo queue, I usually place in bronze and then climb to silver with relative ease. However, I have never truly dedicated myself to the solo duo queue grind. In fact, on average, I only play about 30 to 40 ranked games in a single season. Oh my God. One of the main reasons for this is that I prefer to play normal games with my friends since there are no limitations on group size or rank disparities. Also, being able to use comms in games to communicate with my teammates is important to me. Over the years, I've played a lot of normal games with a certain group of friends who played, who always try to queue as a pre-mate, almost 1,000 in Season 10. I'd always prefer to play with my friends whenever possible um, and usually don't feel motivated to play at all on my own. Sometimes we sub in other friends when necessary so that we nearly will always have a full group when we hit queue up. That being said, the Clash events have been amazing fun and a source of motivation for my friend group. Many of us want to improve as a team and I want us to be one uh, of one mind at peak performance heading into future Clash weekends. My questions are as follows. If I were to get set a goal for not only me, but also my friends to help us improve as a team, how would you recommend we structure our time for the best results? Would you recommend using Flex Q as the best means of getting good practice games and quantifying our improvement? It seems like the Clash events are really where our hearts are at. What are some high quality questions to ask in VOD reviews that can help bring out team alignment? For lane role specific improvement, which content creators, coaches, players would you recommend who have similar game theories and improvement philosophies to us? Um, like to know, you know, for top A to C support, <clears throat> feel free to pick out any portions um, that will be beneficial conversations. Pretty long cool. one there. All right. Um, Where do you want to start with this one? Bring okay. I want to start. Okay. I don't want to sound negative here or whatever, but. Um, I've seen, there's many players like this, a lot of players like this that love playing with their friends and stuff. But, Clash um, is awesome. And Clash is an awesome thing. It's really cool. It's one of the best introductions that Rise does. I think it's great. You know, you all say you're excited about it. Um, and, and, you know, you want to improve as a team, which is great. There's some fantasy that players that I find, you know, who have similar things. It's like, you know, we're a team we're playing a Clash game. There's like a fantasy in your mind where you're like all getting together and like improving together. And like, you've got like this fantasy of like winning Clash or like, climbing the ranks or like being better players and it's it sounds really cool like by communicating better like if we communicate better and stuff like that but where you really improve in league is by playing ranked and solo q we always say you always say as well Curtis, you got to help yourself before you help others and you're really hindering your progress by focusing on on the wrong things that aren't going to give you immediate results to actually help your team more stuff that you bring up here about communication. Uh You talk about, um, you know, teamwork, practicing in flex and stuff like that, you know, for these clash events in theory, you know, it's like, Oh, if we can like just communicate better and stuff like that, but communication is useless. If you're just mechanically misplaying things, you're not versing, you're not pushing yourself. You're not challenging yourself. The actual challenge of climbing ranked helps you, be a better player by again asking better questions and having internal reflection you never will you, you'll never be after a normal game be as like upset as like after or like be able to do the enough introspection as much as a ranked solo game because that's all you on your own and sometimes i find these players use their teammates as a cop out it's like oh like their vote of after is just like oh you know if, oh, if we just communicate this better it's like oh my bad i should have said this better like that's not actually important what well, do you think curtis I mean, it is important, but it's not its not the th- main thing that's going to help you improve. Okay, so let's let's kick this off with, first of all, why being a better player helps the team. Okay. okay? Yeah, that's a good one. Just, just so let's, let's talk about a situation. You're in your flex queue game, your normal pre-made game, and let's just say there is a scuttle fight. 
Mid jungle's got to fight. 315, jungle's both mid on top side, and there's a situation. And now, let's just say you lose that 2v2 skirmish. You get outplayed, whatever, whatever happens, for whatever reason, you lose that fight. Now, in the review, you get into that situation. You may find, find oh, hey, man, hey, Matt, the jungler, let's say the jungler's Matt. Hey, Matt, can we, um, let's go to that, can you go to that scuttle fight at 315? Can we break that down? Look at that. And, you know, you could even ask high quality questions, you know, what information did you need here? Uh, X, Y, Z. Um, did you think we would win this fight? Um, what summoners did he have? Like, whatever it was. Like, there are things that you can do to optimize that skirmishing. That goes for all levels, pro play, everything. We can get into the communication. You can get into the jungle tracking, whatever it is. But let's just say that you had taken a few better trades before that situation, levels one and two. You, you, you actually manipulated the wave better because you understood your matchup as a better 1v1. That situation would never arise, or even if it did arise, you would have such an advantage going to that situation that it would be a free win anyway. So, Because the situation itself, or the, the types of situations that will be brought about, will be much easier to deal with. That's right. You're exactly going right. into situations that will likely be 50-50 or slightly, mm. you're slightly unfavorable. Mm. Not to say you can't win those situations, but you know it's a different skill set <clears throat> than, um, you know, you're, you're, it's like you're getting into the shit, and figuring a way how to get out of it. But if you were to improve by yourself, the chances that you find yourself in a shitty situation is much lower. Mm. So that's why I believe improving individuals. So all the individuals um, and the way they play creates a different reality. View them as like each... Okay, view... Um, it might get a little bit esoteric, a little bit crazy here. But let's just say there was like, a, like you know, the multiverse theory. And it was like, say that there was the exact version of you in five different universes mm. or something. Mm. And then that game got played out the exact same time in every in every dimension. And then one of the versions of you had practiced individually. One of them with you did not and only practice in a team environment. One did a bit of both, whatever it was. You'll, you'll probably find that ac across the course of many games that the that the situations you find yourself in will be much more favorable and you will actually um, win more games overall with the person who was able to focus on it as an individual. That's just the way I believe it will be the case. So the person in the multiverse that has focused more on his individual profile, let's say he's played 200 ranked games that season instead of 30, you think he's... Well, because be we're better. talking about the quality of the route. Because, okay, now to follow on from this, if you were to be the type of team that you, you actually didn't look at those situations in your review, you played as a team... And then you only did individual review. Because this is actually what we did in Die Wars. That's right. Every player would do the individual review first. first. So each player would do five to ten minutes of just pure individual play. Then we would get into the team stuff. But the chances that your Clash team or your normal game team are going to do that is so slim. And and on top of that, like Nathan said, the quality of your opponents are much lower in flex queue and normal games. Okay, even if they aren't, let's say they're at the similar rank. They're not trying as hard. The mentality you have in solo queues is completely different. Mm. So Nathan said this at the beginning, it's the it's the type of learning you will get over the long run by doing solo queue, which will increase you to be a better player. Now, not to say practicing as a team gets no value, but it's kind of like what will give you the most results. It's like this, working by yourself, give you 80% of the results and that teamwork stuff is the 20%. That's, yeah. the, that's yeah. the end, that's the cherry on top. Mm. That's the icing and the cherry on top. But you got to bake the, case, the, the, bake the cake first, you know? At the end of the day, your teammates aren't playing your character for you, you know? Yeah, exactly. If you can play more games in solo queue and really focus individually, it's like you understand how to play this champion. I mean, especially for jungle, it's like, yeah. as if I'm playing Eve or Hecarim or something like that, I'm not playing that differently in my Clash game. Like, I'm playing I'm playing to my team, I don't know. I'm just carrying okay, the game. We know, Nathan, though. You could probably get a similar amount of learning in a team versus solo if your review was incredibly... You're incredibly disciplined as a person. Yeah. Like you knew exactly how that review was going to go and it was not, it was going to be the same regardless, but who's going to do that? Hmm. Who's mentally strong enough to like go into their review and not bring anyone else into it? Like, what's the point of that point as well? Like you're just going to get sucked in to thinking all this other stuff. So this may be yeah, a bit of a downer. You may not enjoy it, but that's fine. If you don't want to enjoy it, let's just say, but let's just say, what's his name again? John Jonathan. Yeah. If Jonathan here, let's say he doesn't want to play solo queue. He refuses to play solo queue for some reason. He just wants to play more for fun. 
Okay, if that's the case with your team, get everyone to do five to 10 minutes of individual review first mm. to see why they were in the situations they got themselves mm. into. Then you can refine it later on with communication. Do Maybe do another five minutes of this communication stuff or macro or knowledge, whatever it is. Okay, that's the way I would recommend doing it, if, you, if possible. Yeah, but our overall advice is get on the solo queue grind. That's correct. Um, now, you ask for other channels. You, I mean, we ask this all the time. Um, I, I, I mean, know. I'd say for uh, AD Carry Arrow... And SF and Saber, you know, XFS and Saber and Arrow, Arrow that pro player or ex pro okay. player. He yeah. actually has some really good edit carry guys. Yeah, I'll say for support Bizzleberry. I think that Bizzleberry guy does some good stuff. And for top lane, only one I kind of know of is is like Wicked. And solo that Solo and Acton only. Yeah, Solo and Acton, he does some okay yeah, stuff so, uh, as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, I would say they're the main ones, man. I mean, no one really you say who has improvement same improvement philosophies i don't think anyone has the same improvement philosophy yeah that. but that's the closest that we can yeah it's the to. closest yeah. yeah is there any other questions within this we didn't didn't um no i think that's about it yeah yeah and also in terms one of the parts of that question was what would what should we focus on to get the most results one thing that when you're doing your individual reviews the sort of questions you should be asking is um, what, you know, what did you want to happen in this game? Like you as an individual mm, champion, mm. rather than what we as a team wanted to happen, what did you want to happen here? If you're playing Oriana or you're playing Victor, like you ideally want certain things to happen. You don't want that early Rift Terror fight or you do want that early Rift Terror fight. How do you want to play the early, early waves? Do you want to have to go to a Rift Scuttle fight or do you not? Like you want to get every player to talk about and at least get them to understand what they want because if none of the players know what they want, then everyone is just trying to please everyone else and that's you right. get nowhere. And you get nowhere, that's you right. Get, you, you got to have now That's players. where you go down the, the fantasy land. It's like, if we work as a team, we can prevail. You know, it's like teamwork, number one. Just get, you guys got to know what you want because then what happens, and then you get into the discussion, Jonathan, where, okay, the jungler might say, I want this to happen because my champion thrives in this situation. I, I spike off this item and I want these sorts of fights, whatever it is. But then the, then the mid laner was like, well, that's weird because I actually want completely opposite. And then you can be like, okay, maybe we just shouldn't draft these champions together. <laughs> Whatever it is. You know, you can that's where you can find that out as well. All right. <clears throat> Next question here is from Muhammad. <clears throat> I have a real bad tilt problem in league. I am a hard stuck diamond player, and in every game I complain about something with my team. I always blame my team for everything. Yes, even when I go 0-10. I just want to know the best way to deal with this. I think I should just take a few months off, maybe years break. Should I go through with this? Your thoughts on my situation. All right, so the fact that you're asking this question means you, right, let's like that. You identify it's a problem and it sounds like you, <clears throat> you think you need a break. My first thing is, it sounds like you could be addicted to the game. This is an identity <clears throat> level thing though. And this is an identity level yeah. thing. I am a hard stuck diamond player and in every game, every game, I will complain about something with my team. Yeah. I always blame my team for everything. This is intense. This is quite an intense question, Nathan. Like, I can even picture the way that he's, yeah. he's typing this. It's like, he's angry, he's frustrated. I mean, I, I, I don't see any reason why having a break... I mean, I could see, think having a break would be a good start. I think that's a good start. I think refresh, man. Yeah. Refresh. Mental refresh. Take maybe two or three weeks off, at least. Few weeks off, come back mental. Re maybe even come back in the new year, mm. something like that. Mm. Um, take a bit of a break, take a breather, come back for season eleven. And um, I would say, whenever I get these sorts of questions, man, I mean, I think, I mean, there's so many ways to tackle this. You can tackle the mental aspect, like the people they're surrounding themselves with. Um, are they playing? Are they swapping their champion pools all the time, which is probably likely very ha happening? All their champions is literally incredibly difficult to play. Yeah, switching roles maybe. Maybe they're switching roles all the time. Maybe they're playing with not. They're playing like, you know, ten games in a row, no no breaks. Yeah. Um, maybe he's playing with like a high ping and getting interrupted by his brother all the time. I mean, there are so many things that could be happening right now. Yeah, that's making him frustrated. We don't have enough information here to give you an accurate rundown of what could be contributing to this i think we always bring it back to the to our our initial what we always talk about is what podcast goes about having a goal yeah at the end of the day doing this stuff is not going to help you achieve your goal and you know that 
you know, like, again, this is this is where sometimes people get into the rut of just playing legal. This is where addiction comes into play. Where they're going in circles and circles and circles. I mean, they have no goal, right? Well, I would say as well, there's an element of, he seems like he's, um, he's got a victim mentality. We got to shift him from being a victim to, yeah, a, player. to a player. Yeah. All right. So if you want to be a player, player is someone who takes total responsibility for how they contributed to every game and every situation. They're trying to figure out what, um, yeah, they, 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 they feel solely responsible for their outcome. Players are solely responsible for their outcome. Players are people who understand that the reason they are in the situation they are in is because they contributed it into it in some way, shape, or form. And they're going to do whatever they can in their power to fix it. You've got only focus on what they can control. They only focus about what you can control, spot on. Whereas victims focus on what's on, out of their control. They think that they are the victim of external circumstances which put them in that situation. And they always feel like, you know, it, it wasn't fair, it wasn't them, and they don't want to take responsibility. Now, generally, the process of going in between or shifting from a victim mentality to a player mentality is asking the right questions. Getting into the review, and this is why I say sometimes, by the way, the review has many functions. Getting into the review does two things, two things. It has obviously the immediate effects of seeing what went wrong, yep. and creating learning objectives, yep. and how you contributed to that situation. Yeah. But it also acts as like a, it's like a, it's like something that prevents you from getting an ego, because you you're actively seeing what's happening here. But then also, it's like a, it's just like a refresh tool. Hmm. Like it it's prevents not just you going from straight, just straight taking that anger game. and going. I'm straight into the next game. You got to. It, it allows you to let go. It gives hmm. you time to let go of what hmm. happened before going into the next game. So, I would ask myself these sorts of questions, Mohammed. First of all, you know. Well, well, why are you playing league? I mean, that's okay. again. Why are you playing league? What is your goal? Yeah. Start with there. Yeah. Start from there. Yeah. But then start with, there. okay, what what have I done to contribute to my situation here? Do I switch champion pools all the time? Do I play autopilot and tilted? Do I not mute chat? Do I swap my champs and my roles? What are you doing that, that is bringing you about this? You're obviously doing some core fundamental things incorrectly to bring about this reality. Okay. And, and the best way to feel or get this feeling of being in control is go into a review and pinpoint what are you doing specifically and, and how is this having an effect on the outcome? As soon as you actually get to see how this is affecting the outcome, you feel much more in control and, um, and you'll likely have a, a much healthier relationship with League of Legends. Start from here and um, what I would recommend if you want to know more about this, go into Google, type in player versus victim mentality. There's a lot of stuff on the internet about it. It's a very important thing for you to understand. And yeah, man, I would say that's where I should start. Player versus victim mentality. Research. Yep. Yep. Hopefully that helps, dude. But take a break first. Yep. Definitely recommend taking a break. We are in a... Probably, that's probably as bad as it can get. You know, it's I mean, rock the, bottom. again, rock, that's rock bottom. That's rock bottom, yeah. man. All right. So next one. Well, this is the last one we'll do. He's from Johnny. So nice and easy one here. It says, yo, what's up? Yo, yo, man. Yo, yo. My question for both of you is what is your least favorite champion? What champion do you both think needs an update? Kit design, appearance, take care. What is my least favorite champion? My least favorite champion is going to be Udia. And my champion that I want to rework for is going to be Udia. Really? Yeah. I hate Yumi. I just so you're, you're you're more thinking to play again. So I'm more thinking to play because I, I mean, I, if you don't know my story, I was an Udia one trick coming to rank two challenger. We love Udia, but I hate the champion now because the champion is so outdated. Yeah. So he's my least favorite champion, and he's if I was to say least favorite to play against, yeah, it's got to be Yumi. I think that the champion yeah. shouldn't be in league. I think that it's just it just doesn't make sense. Its kit doesn't make sense. What about it? I mean, you're you're like. You don't need to play the game. You just attach to someone. Yeah. You just press buttons. You know, it's like, you know, well, you're, you're completely throwing. It teaches you everything wrong. Yeah, you're, it teaches you everything you're wrong. You're not clicking. The There's no yeah. mechanics. I mean, there is mechanics. You pop out to your order and things like that. Yes. But like but the majority of it. Yeah. Th that's like, only for higher. That's for higher. Players, you know, I would say as well, um, I hate the champ design of, of Vlad. I really do. Oof, yeah. I mean, I'm with you on that one as well, to be honest. Like, I, okay. I used to hate Cassidy. But like I kind of respect Cassidy now, and it has obvious weaknesses, and yeah. like so does Vlad. But something just doesn't sit right with me. About it. It's like it just doesn't just it doesn't belong in the game. Mm. Like when I think about Vlad, it's like 
He's never good because it's like a good meta for Vlad. It's like Vlad is Vlad because like he gets some weird buff. He gets some random buff and he becomes strong temporarily then just gets instantly nerfed. Like he's he's either completely in the meta or he's completely out of the meta. Mm. And I really hate that. Mm. I just I just hate those champions. And the thing I hate about it, it, it's similar to Yumi, is it teaches you all the wrong things. Like you don't have to ration your resources. You get you actually get rewarded for not doing anything in low elo. Mm. Like just sit there and farm mm. your ass off in a no skill way. You have no skill shots, essentially apart from your ult, which is a huge skill shot, which is impossible to hit. You have something that can escape from ganks with your W. Like, yes, I'm, I'm not saying it has no counterplay, but just the design just feels so underwhelming and it just feels outdated. It doesn't feel like it belongs in the game. Um, it's Master Yi. I think Master Yi is the Vlad of Jungle, actually. Trinomi is another one, actually. Yeah. Trinomi is a Yeah, I agree. What the hell, man? Trinomi is the Vlad and the... Ma Vlad, Master Yi... And Trinomir. Trinomir, they'll U say they're all yeah. things. And then Udia. No, Udia's a different problem. That's a different problem. Yeah. Like, Trinomir, Yi, and Vlad Udia's are the similar sucks. problems. Those, those champs a good in a bad way good in a bad way yeah, yeah. there's no in between they yeah. either pop off or they just like do nothing who would that be for adc does adc have one of those i mean uh, vain nah i mean Ezreal? Vain, I think ezreal's a bit dumb yeah it is pretty bloody dumb yeah i think ezreal like the e ability is so stupid when you think about it <laughs> like what <laughs> like how important flash is a you just have a second flash. one yeah second one well, on, on an ADC. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. I mean, it's just been around for, like in every year and every, every meta, meta, no matter what. Yeah. Like the kit is just fundamentally good. And let's okay, as a flip side to end this one, fun little question. Okay, we've spoken at like really outdated kits. What are kits that are just so good? That you just think they're the best kits in the game across any any champion it can the be. Best kits. Like well, who's got like the best some of the best kits in the game? At least has a beautiful kit. I like it. it. Has obvious. It has a very obvious identity. Yeah. yeah. A lot of outplay. A lot of outplay yeah. potential. Yeah. High skill cap. Skill shots. Yeah. That's like what it, it is. All those it's things. Great. That's a great things. kit. Yeah. I think Lee Sin's got a pretty cool kit. Yeah. As Lee well. Sin's got an excellent kit as well. I like well. Lee Sin. Um. I mean, I just love Oriana. I think Oriana is just the ultimate mage. Yeah. I love it. I think Oriana. I mean, that's biased. What about I mean, Syndra? Syndra. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess. It's a very high skill cap mage. I also really like Azir as a champ. I don't know why. I just, maybe it's aesthetically pleasing or whatever it is, but I love the feel of the kit and I love that it has like such a high skill cap and it, it's one of those champions that can just always be around if played very good. I, I don't know. I just, I just really like the kit. I really, really like the kit. I hate Zillion. As well, I think Zillion's kit's stupid. Doesn't make Singed as well as another one I don't like. Anyway, we could sit here all day and name champions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through everyone. This is the welcome to music. We're gonna go through every champion and say what's what we don't like and like right. about it. So um anyway, so next episode we've got the guest and um The guest. The guest Jonathan Brown, big boy Jonathan Brown. Yeah. Um that'll be an interesting one. So um you wanna wrap it up, Nathan? Uh, that's it for episode number 22 of Broken by Concept podcast show. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys.